Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We are ready to go. It's a big weekend. Million, million dollar races on the Derby Trail. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. One of my favorite times of year is Derby prep season, and the, these next two weekends are huge Derby prep season. Uh, uh, we've, we've reached the huge part of the Derby prep season, I should say, with the Arkansas Derby, the Florida Derby this week, and three big ones next week. So let's out. without further ado, let's go to the bigger money race, which is actually in Arkansas at Oaklawn Park. $1.25 million on the line for this nine furlong grade one Arkansas Derby, Matt. While the Florida Derby seems to have a horse who stands over the field, it looks like the Arkansas Derby is much more wide open. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian, for sure. If you take a look at the derby points that the horses in the Arkansas Derby field have earned, we got three horses that currently sit in the top 20 of points, three horses that have enough points in most years that will get them into the field. So we got some some horses that have a lot of points, but we got a bunch of horses that do not have a lot of points. Yeah, I think it's an interesting betting race, Matt. There, there are some favorites in here. The three horses you mentioned, maybe one other favorite, if you will. But then there's a number of interesting horses. Let's start from the rail out, if you will. Uh, there's that guy again, D. Wayne Lucas, the timeless D. Wayne Lucas, brings Bourbon Bash off a fifth place finish last time in the Rebel. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Triple Crown race winner, D. Wayne Lucas. Uh, it's hard to discount Lucas in in, in any uh, in any case. Uh, and and here's Lucas again, uh, coming back with a horse that uh, uh, ran a really good uh, allowance race at Oaklawn Park, and then most recently, because Lucas will always take a shot, was fifth in the Rebel. Yeah, fifth in the level. I didn't think it was a terrible performance, but then again, nothing to scream, hey, Bourbon Bash is all of a sudden going to jump up. As you said, Lucas has done it before, but uh, still looks like a deserving long shot in the field. Probably we could say the same about the two, Matt, but uh, this recent maiden winner is getting better and better with each start. Yeah, absolutely. A son of uh, Classic Empire. And and boy, we're seeing more and more of those Classic Empire horses. We got a couple uh, of them in this field. Yeah, it, it took four tries for uh, this McPeak runner to break his maiden, but he did it nicely at, at Oaklawn Park. Yeah, he, he really rolled from well back in that race. He's a, a late uh, runner for sure. And that was a pretty impressive maiden win over a horse who had run some decent maiden races before. So Interlock Empire might be getting good for trainer Kenny McPeak. There's other late runners in here. There's also speed in here, Matt. And uh, let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector at this point because the next two horses out of the gate, the three and the four, are listed as the two horses most likely to be on the early lead. And we see that red fast pace button. Harlow Cap, two Eagles River, both interesting horses. Harlow Cap is a horse who's changed connections recently. Yeah, and, and interestingly, um, this horse uh, began his career uh, in California with Bob Baffert. It took a few tries for him to break his maiden, but he did that eventually at Santa Anita. And the different part is that we don't usually see many of these ba uh, Baffert horses get moved to the barn of Steve Asmussen, as this one did. And Asmussen pretty quickly uh, tr put him onto the Derby Trail in the Risen Star, where he finished sixth. Um, and you know, so now he's had a little bit more time since then to get acclimated in Asmussen's barn. Yeah. And I also will say the risen star was a race where all the top finishers came from off the pace. Harlow cap pressed the pace, actually got the lead for a bit in there. He certainly could improve second start for his new trainer, Steve Asmussen. But the other speed is right outside him, Two Eagles River, a, a, an interesting horse, Matt, who's coming off a very nice win, although it wasn't in stakes company last time. Yeah, and and, and an interesting horse, because if you go back to uh, his uh, two-year-old campaign, he won his first, he won at first asking 
for trainer Chris Hartman at Churchill Downs and uh, and now coming back uh, in February, had a really nice allowance victory at Oaklawn Park also. Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you look at his form, it's it's very good throughout. Uh, maybe the one two starts ago where he finished third was a little disappointing, but I think he had some trouble at the start in that one last time. Not only did he win a nice allowance race, uh, looking good doing it, but the horse he beat, of course, was Disarm. Disarm moved forward and ran second last week in the uh, Louisiana Derby. So that's something to think about with two Eagles River, uh, a horse who looks to want the lead in here. And uh, again, Harlow Cap is another one that could be out there. Then you have a real wild card, number five, Matt, Airtime. Airtime is one of those Diodoro horses. Uh, people who, who watch uh, Robertino Diodoro during the year know what I'm talking about because a lot of his horses will show improvement when they come to the barn. And Airtime is no different, Matt. In fact, his last two races look pretty good. His last two races make me think that he is a candidate for an upset here in the Arkansas Derby. Yeah, an interesting horse, and and you mentioned the last two races, two races back. Uh, he was uh, running in a claiming race, and he was taken out of that race by Diodoro back in uh, January, and that was a race that he won by 10 lengths. You might say, okay, that was a claimer. Yes, it, yes, it was, but since then, he's come back and won an allowance uh, the following month, uh, for Diodoro. Yeah, and the allowance horse he beat with uh, with some authority, at least, as he got through on the rail, was Shopper's Revenge. And Shopper's Revenge, another lightly uh, raced horse who ran a pretty good race last week in the Louisiana Derby. He was fourth, so airtime, one to watch here. One of the favorites, finally, we get to is Angel of Empire, Matt. And, and as I look back at that time form U.S. pace projector, you'll see some of the favorites are back off the early lead. Angel of Empire being one of them, the sixth. He's coming off a nice win. Uh, that was at the fairgrounds where he actually won the race. We've talked a little bit about the Risen Star rally to win that for trainer Brad Cox. Two races back, he was at Oakland Park. Yeah, he certainly was. He was at Oakland Park. Uh, you know, back in the beginning of the Derby Trail races for uh, 2023 and had a nice second in the Smarty Jones as obviously progressed nicely to get that win in the risen star at a different racetrack and already has 54 derby points so he's got a spot locked up in the field yeah he's got a spot locked up he doesn't have a spot locked up in my top five or six derby contenders yet but i could see him doing that but he's got to prove it here in the arkansas derby the risen star uh still some questions although the horses that he beat Came back and ran reasonably well. Uh, two fills, the third place finisher with a big win uh, in the Jeff Ruby Stakes last week. And the horse who ran second was Sun Thunder, who didn't embarrass himself in the Louisiana Derby. So Angel of Empire will get his chance to prove how good he is here. Uh, another horse who will be uh, among the favorites is Bill Mott's Rocket Ken, Matt. And he's coming off a couple of graded stakes at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, he's been on the Derby Trail at Gulfstream Park. Um, got 40 Derby points by way of a win in the Holy Bowl, a very nice win in the Holy Bowl for Bill Mott. And then he came right back in the next stop uh, in the Fountain of Youth, finishing second. Well, you know, when you say you finish second to Forte, uh, that's – pretty much a feather in your cap considering you beat the rest of the field and forte right now is way 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 the favorite in las vegas futures in the upcoming kentucky derby future wager pool six for this year's kentucky derby yeah this is uh this is a bit of a test to see where forte stands if you will the arkansas derby will be run after the florida derby so take that for what it's worth but the um uh if Forte is head and shoulders above the rest of these horses looking to go to the Kentucky Derby, maybe we take Rocket Can's second place finish last time in the Fountain Youth as a very good performance. On the other hand, if Forte is more just uh, at the top of the class now, but not a big edge, the fact that Rocket Ken was well beaten by Forte, maybe that won't translate well to his Arkansas Derby form. Uh, the 
morning line favorite. I wasn't sure who would be the morning line favorite, but I, I think they might have the right horse and reincarnate, even though he was third last time in the Rebel Matt. He had a lot of trouble in that last race. Yeah, he sure did. And, and you know, taking that into consideration and taking into consideration that this guy is one of the Bafferts uh, um, that uh, – the beginning of his career um when he started out he had a series of second place finishes got his maiden victory eventually won the sham but had to forfeit the points because he was still running for baffert and as we have come to expect this one was transferred to the barn of tim yakteen and he put him in the rebel and reincarnate is a horse it's a bat he's a baffert prefers to be more forwardly placed he got out of the gate just absolutely horribly in that race and then had more trouble later on so it was a pretty good accomplishment to get third uh that day uh in the rebel yeah you see him there on the time form u.s pace projector one more time uh pretty close to the lead and that's where he's shown he prefers to be as you alluded to in in several races in california he was getting better and better he had a nice win in the sham and i think it was a pretty awful trip on an awful track now his sire is good magic and it looks like they're running on off tracks but this horse looks like a horse who could run on anything he's run well on turf fast tracks and sloppy tracks now and yeah bad start rallied nicely had more trouble in the stretch was really running well uh down the lane one third in the rebel so he is a very interesting horse assuming he's closer to the lead here than he was last time in the rebel number nine matt is another one of those long shots that i actually think has a shot i know he's only coming out of a maiden race but king russell impressed me i i was down there for that rebel stakes day and he won a maiden race that i thought was good He's a son of creative cause, and he just looks like a horse who really wants a distance. I like the way he's been getting better and finishing his races of late. Yeah, uh, and that certainly is a positive. And, and the fact that it took him five tries to break his maiden is probably going to be a reason that you're going to get a pretty nice price on this horse. Yeah, I think so. But Ronnie Moquette might have a horse who wants to run classic distances in the long shot King Russell. We would assume the same as, uh, uh, again of another shot, uh, another son of gun runner trained by Steve Asmussen. Of course, I'm talking about Red Route One. He's another horse who could actually be the favorite here in the Arkansas Derby. He made up a ton of ground coming from detached from the field in last to be second last time in the Rebel. Yes, this is what we would call a legitimate deep closer um and, and he's used that style to run well on the derby trail two second place finishes uh at oakland park in the southwest in the rebel and and it is absolutely important to note in this race that he's getting the blinkers on brian and and why not try that at this point he's got 33 points already probably enough to get into the Derby field. So Asmussen saying, I'm going to put the blinkers on. I assume hoping that he won't get quite as far behind, but I like his strategy. This is a great spot in which to try the blinkers. Yeah. And, and we were talking about that time form us pace projector before, and it, it showed a fast pace. So like he got in the rebel, he should get a good pace here. Listen, the blinkers I don't think are all of a sudden going to make him a speed horse or someone near the lead, but Red Route 1, uh, maybe he's a little bit more focused early and maybe he has a little less to do. He's certainly a horse who you think would once again be a, a presence in the exotics. Uh, nine furlong shouldn't be a problem. He still never won a race on dirt, uh, but uh, Red Route 1, certainly one of the main contenders here. The last one, horse on the list, Matt, I, I'm really not sure about, but uh, I guess anytime you have a Keith, Ask me, Sin Longshot, you should give him a look at least. Yeah, uh, DeSormo is always dangerous uh, uh, with his horses. And, and this one, he just claimed him for $50,000. His last four starts have been on the turf. He broke his maiden in a maiden claimer on the turf. Uh, a guy like DeSormo, you know, he must see something that says that he is going to run at least to some extent, on the dirt. Yeah, and he's got some nice workouts on the dirt, but uh, boy, 
uh, cheaper races on the turf, it's it's hard to pick him out for any other reason maybe than the workouts to being decent and and the trainer. All right, that's the feel for the Arkansas Derby, Matt. Let's jump right in. Uh, we got a lot of horses to look at in Florida as well. And uh, of course, the horse that we're going to start with is number 11, Forte. Pletcher complained a little bit when he saw Forte draw the 11 post in the nine furlong Florida Derby. Yeah, and it certainly has been a topic of discussion since the since the draw. Uh, um, the the Florida Derby has an interesting field of 12, four of four long shots in the race from the barn of Safi Joseph. Uh, Forte comes into the race with 90 Derby points already, Brian. But the rest of the field combined, Brian, has only 48 Derby points. Yeah, that's that's good math there, Matt. And and yeah, it, the 11 was a point of. Uh... A talking point after the draw for the one million dollar nine furlong florida derby on saturday but another talking point probably is who the heck else is in this field because it really is forte and everybody else of the uh, 11 other horses you mentioned safi joseph with four long shots there's there's really 11 other horses who who you could almost call a long shot it says four to five on the morning line for forte matt i don't think you're going to get four to five here in the florida derby on the two-year-old champion who's already won uh, four graded stakes, three grade ones, and looked so good last month in the Fountain of Youth. Forte, the horse to beat. Uh, Pletcher says it's no advantage to be parked outside in the post going two turns at Gulfstream Park. Here is the track trends from Horse Racing Nation the last 55 races. You see the average number of runners is only 7.4. Big difference than the 12 we'll see here in the Florida Derby. But uh, you don't see a lot of horses coming from the outside winning at Gulfstream in these two-turn races. Yeah, Brian, but you know what? Uh, I don't think the horses that have been breaking from out in the 11 hole, I think there's been like 10 or 11 or so this year. I, I, I don't think any of them are named Forte, and I would be interested to see how many of them had Irat Ortiz in the saddle. I'm not concerned about the 11 post position at all. You've got Irad up, uh, probably without question the best jockey in the country right now. And in the last few years, he's not going to have any trouble with this horse unless something weird happens. He's going to get him out of the gate, let him relax, get him into a nice spot in the field where he wants. You know, in a way, maybe it's safer to be on the far outside. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you, Matt. I think the 11 hole won't be bad at all. There is some speed in this race, and he should be able to kind of move over a little bit in mid-pack and get a nice spot heading into the first turn. His owner, Mike Rapoli, one of his owners, Mike Rapoli, also said, this is, a, this is education. We want to win the Kentucky Derby. So this big field with an outside post will help uh, Forte learn a little bit more as he gets ready for the big one on the first Saturday in May. Who else, Matt? We know Forte is uh, the big favorite, the, the, the class of the race. Uh, the second choice is right inside him. In fact, the second and third choices sandwich him on the outside in this 12 horse field. Fort Bragg is a pretty interesting horse. Um, another one that came from the, uh, the, the Baffert barn. He won a couple of nice races uh, last year, beating at least beating good horses. He, he beat Practical Move. He was taken down for bothering him, but he finished ahead of Practical Move. He also beat Reincarnate. Uh, since he's moved to graded stakes, though, it hasn't been quite as much success for the son of Tappet. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, when he was with Baffert, he ran in the Low Sal Futurity, which had a, a field of five, I think it was, four of them Bafferts and, and one of them for uh, Tim Yachtine with, uh, with a Tim Yachtine, his own uh, horse, who we, we certainly know about uh um and, and he ran third in that uh in that los al futurity and since moving to the barn of yachtine he stayed in california and was in the san felipe and finished fifth yeah that that's not promising but on the other hand i look at this field and i and, and i say who's better than fort bragg or who is better than those stakes losses to practical move and to tell you the truth matt i have a hard time coming up with 
a horse or multiple horses after Forte that would have done any better than Fort Bragg did in those races. So he's a horse I don't really want to like. But on the other hand, he kind of looks pretty good if you're handicapping everybody else other than Forte in this field. Uh, speaking of everybody else in Fort, uh, other than Forte, there, there's your old friend uh, WNL. Uh, on the far outside, a, a grade two winner as its two-year-old at the distance, Matt, at the distance. Uh, but he's only made one start this year, and it wasn't very good. No, it sure wasn't. Uh, his victory in the Remsen um, at Aqueduct, going a mile and an eighth on that deep, tiring track uh, 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 at Aqueduct was, was certainly noteworthy, but not so much at this point after that uh, eighth place finish in the Sam F. Davis uh, coming from the uh, 12 hole is a concern for me with a horse like WNL. It sure isn't going to make it easy for him to make a huge turnaround in form. Yeah, it's a tough spot to make a turnaround. But again, we're talking about a weak field. I also wonder about the Remsen because both of his wins came on wet tracks. And uh, he hasn't looked quite as good on a fast racing service. So WNL uh, parked out there on the far outside here in the Florida Derby. Fourth choice on the morning line, Matt, is Cyclone Mischief. And Cyclone Mischief uh, came back after a disappointing uh, loss as the favorite in the Holy Bull. He came back with a pretty good performance last time, went third in the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, it was better. Um, um, and, and Cyclone Mischief certainly needed to... Uh, uh, run better than he did in the Holy Bull um, when he got third in the Fountain of Youth. Um, like you said, Brian, uh, in this field, uh, you certainly got to pay more attention to him, but um, I don't know. Uh, um, I think I like others better. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning to others better as well. But yeah, you do have to respect it. We Again, we just said after Forte, it's not a strong field. Cyclone Mischief uh, has has shown himself with two good races at Gulfstream Park. If you can draw a line through that Holy Bull race, Cyclone Mischief becomes one of the horses you have to talk about. There's the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt, and, and it has Cyclone Mischief uh, a little farther back than I would have thought. He's uh, back almost near the middle of the pack there. It says fast pace as well, and, and it's led by some... Uh, Safi Joseph, a lightly raised Safi Joseph horse named Mr. Peaks, but they think Mr. Peaks will set a fast pace, and then you got a bunch of horses chasing. Where's Forte? That area is the number 11, definitely back in the middle of the pack, maybe even a little farther back than the middle of the pack, but are we expecting a fast pace here? Um, you know, I think we're expecting a fast pace, but, you know, it... it the, the five horse is one of those long shots that we were mentioning from the barn of Safi Joseph. And, and Safi, of course, is never shy about letting horses run and run fast. Yeah, okay, he might be out on the lead, but I don't know. That's not a very strong pace setter, not the kind that I expect to be around in the coming down the stretch. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head, Matt. I, I think we could use the words cheap early speed here when we're talking about Mr. Peaks, who's still a maiden. He's, he's got some promise. He's run a couple of good six furlong sprints, and he showed a lot of speed. But how the heck is he going to stick around in the Florida Derby? I'm not sure why he's in the field, honestly. But if he uh, sets down some fractions, he's kind of the pace setter of the field. Uh, there you see Fort Bragg on the outside, not too far off the early lead. Mr. Ripple, who I think is a more promising, at least, Florida Derby contender for Safi Joseph is is also close. And then uh, the horse on the rail, Matt, this is actually the horse I like second best in here. His name is Mage. Uh, only two starts for trainer Gustavo Delgado, but uh, a nice maiden win. And then all things considered, I think his fourth in the Fountain of Youth was pretty good. Yeah, now we're talking about a horse that uh, that has speed used that speed to be an impressive debut winner at Gulfstream Park by almost four, by almost four lengths, used that speed in only a second start, making that big jump from a maiden win into onto the Derby Trail to finish fourth in the uh, Fountain of Youth. This is a horse with speed. Okay, maybe he doesn't get in the lead. Maybe that cheap speed gets to the lead, but uh, Mage is a horse that, 
has a chance to uh, keep that speed going coming around the turn, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the guy that's on the lead. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and like I already said, he's the horse I like second best in the race. He's the horse I think who could turn out to be a really nice horse uh, uh, after Forte from this Florida Derby field. Mage was impressive as a maiden winner. He didn't have a kind of reincarnate revel trip. It wasn't that bad, but it wasn't good either for a horse moving up to graded stakes company, moving to two turns for the first time. And he was also finishing well in that bout in the youth went forth. So I think Mage is the horse that Forte ultimately has to beat, Matt. But uh, as we're looking at this field one last time, I, I just don't know what else. We, talk, we talked about the, the uh, uh, Safi Joseph horses. West Coast Cowboy may be the most accomplished coming off a third in the in the Holly Bowl, but I, I didn't really love that performance either. Uh, Nautical Star is an Oklahoma bred with uh, similar experience to Mr. Peak, so though he can rally a little bit. Il Miracola is a long shot. We've seen a bunch. Shaq Diesel, another long shot that we've seen a bunch. Jungfrau got some money in the Withers, but really didn't run in the Withers at all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, uh, it, I I think it's uh, as we said, it, it's Forte and it's Forte's race to win. Uh, Mage uh, listed at ten to one on the morning line. I don't know, Brian. I don't think we're going to get eight to one on. Uh, sorry, I don't think we're going to get ten to one on Mage. Yeah, we might not get 10 to 1, but remember, I, I, I think Forte might be closer to 2 to 5 than 4 to 5. So everybody else is going to uh, be a little higher than you see on the morning line, or most of them will be. But yeah, I think Mage won't be the, what would that be, the fifth choice yeah. as he's listed on the morning line. All right, so we agree on Mage as uh, probably the most likely horse to give Forte a race in the Florida Derby, but it's time to make top picks now, sir. I know you've got some opinions. Let's start with the Arkansas Derby first, and you have the honor, sir. Okay, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Brian, you know, I, th I think that uh, the Arkansas Derby, uh, the the horses that have the most derby points, uh, that reflects that they have performed well in the top races in the, on the derby trail. They've got a class edge uh, over uh, – most of the field and out of those horses, three, four horses, if you throw reincarnate in there, um, I'm going to lead toward Rocket Can. Um, and, and mostly because I think we'll get a little bit of a better price on Rocket Can than certainly we'll get on uh, uh, reincarnate for Baffert slash Yak Teen and, and Angel of Empire. Uh, for Brad Cox, uh, Bill Mott horses have a tendency to get overlooked sometimes. So um, I liked his Holy Bull win, second to Forte. Um, I'm going to go with Rocket Can. Yeah, Rocket Can is an interesting horse. He's got some tactical speed. He was between horses last time, and he was definitely uh, he, he was able to get second behind uh, the champion Forte. Uh, I don't like him best in here, but he's certainly one of the horses you have to look at. I'm not sure what these odds are going to be. I'm really not. Uh, reincarnate Red Route 1, I think those are the most likely favorites, but uh, I kind of think Rocket Ken will get some money. I think Angel M of Empire will get some money. So probably anybody you pick is, is my idea will, will not have bad odds. I think there are some interesting long shots. I, I mentioned a few of them, the Deodoro horse, uh, uh, King Russell for a bomb. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting betting race. I'm going to spread it around a little, little bit, but the, the horse I like best is Reincarnate. I, I couldn't get past Reincarnate because he's got speed. He's got the ability to fight off horses. We've seen that. It looks like he wants to go nine furlongs. I thought his Rebel race, all when all was said and done, was really, really good considering everything. I think Reincarnate just is, uh, for me, clearly the most likely winner. So I had to pick him on top, even though he might, be the favorite and the fourth floor derby matt i don't know how much we have to say about our top picks i just couldn't pick anybody in the race and 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 look our audience in a sh with a straight eye sometimes sometimes I, I i like to try to beat the big favorite and, and and a long shot i think has a shot to beat the favorite but i really don't think anybody has a reasonable shot to beat the favorite here i don't either brian i and i agree with you completely uh 
right now. Um, it, it's hard to find any reason to knock Forte. Uh, four wins in a row. Three of them were grade ones going back to the end of a fantastic two-year-old campaign. Came right back in the f- fountain of youth. Picked up right where he left off. Um and maybe even looking better and stronger as a three-year-old. Um, it's his race to win right out of the gate um, all the way around the track. Yeah, and, and Matt doesn't necessarily mean on the lead when no. he said that, but uh, Forte is just head and shoulders the horse to beat here. And 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 honestly, I don't think Forte will be my top pick. Assuming he wins this race nicely, I don't think he'll be my top pick as a pretty clear Kentucky Derby favorite. I just think this race is all about Forte, and that's why he's my top pick, even though his odds are one to two or so in Saturday's Florida Derby. All right, Matt, two big Kentucky Derby preps, three big Kentucky Derby preps next week. Let's get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, hey, it, these are two exciting races and and where we're going to start to get an idea about how good are are some of these horses can you know can reincarnate uh, establish himself with a with a really good performance can the the brad cox runners come back and win again will forte keep rolling so lots of interesting questions to be answered at gulfstream and oaklawn this weekend yeah and i think forte is the one established horse you could argue practical move or tap and trice who We'll talk about a lot next week, uh, but uh, Forte is the one established horse. So all these other races, the Arkansas Derby, then the Wood Memorial, the Bluegrass, and the Santa Anita Derby next week, we have a lot to prove here before we get to the Kentucky Derby and start really handicapping that big one at Churchill Downs. Anyway, that's our show for this week, folks. I want to thank you, as always, for tuning in. We appreciate it. If you hadn't yet hit that subscribe button, do so now. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Derby Wars our sponsor, the best contest site out there, and Timeform US for their great pace projections. Folks, next week, you know where we'll be right here talking those big derby preps once again on Horse Center. Have a good week.